Hello, welcome to the calculus class. Today we'll discuss some of the challenging examples of calculating the derivatives for some of the power and rational functions. And by the challenging, I mean we need to think outside of the box. You know, there are so many cases in math when you can solve a problem in so many ways, and they both could be equivalent, or one could be better than another one. For example, I posted a clip about the derivative of the arcsine function. I was using the direct approach that was first time on the internet. You won't find it anywhere in the books. Everybody posted there on the YouTube only the inverse function approach and every book has that approach. I demonstrated the direct definition of the derivative approach and both were kind of equivalent. But today in this case, my examples will demonstrate the opposite case when the direct approach is actually catastrophic, it won't help us in this case. Let's look at the example one. Given a function, rational function, the numerator polynomial, one minus x plus x squared, the denominator one plus x plus x squared, and we need to find the derivative of that function, actually the s derivative of that function at zero. In other words, we need to find the derivative of this function of the order of s at the input variable equal to zero. As you can see, the direct approach would be the quotient rule catastrophic. With the order of two, order of three, will be so messy, we will not be able to find it. That's why I will try to use other tools, what we know, some transformations maybe will help us. As I can see, we have a division of two polynomials. And you know how to perform the long division, the vertical division, and the result of that would be just one minus two x minus two x over one plus x plus x squared. I hope that's clear. It's a long division, it's just a couple of steps. You all know how to do that. There are tons of the clips on YouTube. Every book can show you how to do that. So it's equal to, now, if you look at the denominator, it really looks like a big chunk of the difference of the cubes. That's another basic formula. We always remember it. One of the basic formulas of the algebra, one minus x cubed is equal to one minus x by x squared plus x plus one. So it looks very similar. So what if I, I need to complete the difference of the cube. What if I multiply both numerator and the denominator by a non-zero value, which is one minus x? Yes, it's a non-zero value. I can do that. Because x is equal to zero, one minus x is not zero. So let me transform my numerator with a minus two x squared plus two x. If I pull minus up front, well, this minus will be plus. So we have one plus here, minus two x squared, now it's plus two x squared. Because minus two x, pull minus up front, well, was plus x, pull minus up front, it's minus x over, my denominator is actually the difference of the cubes, one minus x formula. So this is what we have now here, and it's equal to, next line, one plus two x squared minus two x, one over one minus x, Cube. If you look at the last fraction we have, it really looks like a formula for the infinite summation of the geometric series for the case when the common ratio is less than 1 by the absolute value. I will remind you that formula S is equal to a 1 over 1 minus Q, where a 1 is the first term. If you compare this fraction with the summation formula, so a1 is equal to 1, 
1 minus q, q is equal to x cubed in my case. I hope that's clear. So I can just expand this fraction into the infinite geometric series summation and it will be equal to 1 plus 2x squared minus 2x. And here I have actually 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6 plus and so on. Now let me just multiply those polynomials with 1 plus actually minus 2x 1 minus 2x increasing powers of the variable so minus 2x plus 2x squared minus 2x fourth plus 2x fifth minus 2x seventh plus 2x eighth and so on we have an infinite summation here let's look at the coefficients of this series I have minus 2 for the powers of the variables, 1, 4, 7, and so on. So those are the powers which give me the remainder of 1 when I divide them by 3. And I have plus 2 coefficients for the powers 2, 5, 8, and so on. So those powers give me the remainder of 2 when I divide them by 3. And uh, there are no powers which are divisible exactly by 3, such as power 3, 6, 9, they are not there. So their coefficients are equal to 0. So I can actually write this as the infinite summation of series 8sx to the power of x, s, sorry. s runs from 1 to infinity. And actually, I need to estimate my coefficients. What I just said, I need to write this exactly. So, a s coefficient is equal to minus 2, minus 2 here, minus 2 here, minus 2. In which case, when s is equal to 3k minus 2 which is when k is the natural number, 1, 2, 3, so it will be 1, 4, and so on. So you can say for 1, for 4, and so on. And a s is equal to exactly plus 2 when s is equal to 3k minus 1. And a s is equal to 0 when s is equal to exactly 3k. And k is actually a natural number. 1, 2, 3, and so on. Here's my natural number. And this is all the coefficients I have in my case. And we're almost done. We're almost there. Then the derivative of this function will be equal to, let me just continue this line, then the derivative of this function of the order of s when my input variable is equal to zero, will fork out into three conditions. Let's look at the first case. So when I have orders of one, four, seven, and so on, the powers which give me the remainder of one when I divide by three. So in this case, I will just have this coefficient of minus two Let's just look at the order of 1, for example. This is 0. First derivative will be just minus 2. And, that's, and the derivative of the remaining terms, they will all have powers of x. And since it's at 0, x is equal to 0, all the powers of x will disappear. So they will not be there. So first order derivative gives me just minus 2. Coefficient minus 2. The next order would be 4. When k is 2, was 3 by 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. So for the order of 4, all those coefficients will disappear up to this one, to minus 2. When I differentiate this term 4 times, 
will be 4x cubed, next one, 3x squared, then 2x, and then 1. So it will be just minus 2 multiplied by 4 by 3 by 2. That's the factorial goes down up to 1. So it's just the factorial of the order, which is s in general. So it's s factorial. And that's in the case when s is equal to 3k minus 2. And the same I will get plus 2s factorial when s is equal to 3k minus 1. And it's equal to 0 when s is equal to 3k, where k is a natural number. And that's, that's it. That's actually the answer. Such a nice way of finding the derivative. Let's just check it. Let's say if this case, for example, the order of 2, 5, 8, and so on. So if it's the order of 2, differentiate it two times, those disappear. Here I'll have just plus 2 by 2, which is this, 2 factorial of 2, 2 by 2. But the order of 5, again, all the terms before x fifth power will disappear, will be equal to 0, all those derivatives, up to the fifth order. This is fourth power. This one differentiated 5 times, so it will be plus 2, 5 by x fourth, then 4 by x cubed, 3 by x squared, 2 by x, well, so 2 by 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's a factorial then, s value, so 2s factorial. And other terms, if it's order of five derivatives, all of those terms will have x as a factor. And since my x is equal to zero, so all those terms disappear. So it will be just two s factorial and zero when my order is evenly divisible by three. That's the answer. As you can see, very short, nice way of finding the derivative of this rational function not at all using the direct approach. It will be catastrophic if you attempt the direct approach. Let's look at the second example. Is the function differentiable at x is equal to zero? The function is a cubic root of e x minus one minus x minus x squared. So again, the direct approach, this would be the derivative of the power function, so one, third up front and will be this thing, one third minus so power rule it gets crazy and the chain rule, it's a composition of functions here, so it will be crazy fraction and then the derivative of that at zero will have crazy indeterminate form, zero over zero, will be very difficult to resolve it, catastrophic, so the direct approach will help us, we'll try to think outside of the box Look at the other tools. Please remember, e to the x, let's look at the series. We know that e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus so on. Infinite series summation. We all know, we all remember it. We discussed it in the calculus course. So if I plug the series under the root, minus one, one, x, 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 y. Those first three terms drop out, and actually we have here, f of x will be equal to the cubic root of x cubed over three factorial plus x fourth over four factorial plus so on. Yeah? higher orders of the infinitely small values. There is a little o notation term for that. So it's equal to the cubic root of x cubed over 3 factorial plus little o x cubed. We discussed that, what it means. So if I look at the rest of my series, except for the x cubed term, and uh, look at the limit of that over the x cubed when x goes to some fixed constant, which is zero in this case, and that limit will be equal to zero, which means there will higher order of the infinite small values there, so we can really disregard them. 
they're really small, getting way smaller than the first term, that's the notation little o of x cubed. So now I can factor x cubed out. So x cubed over 3 factorial, and here I just have 1 plus x cubed out. So it's little o of order of 1 now. So it's order of 1. Yeah. 1 when you factor x out. So 1 compared to x, x squared, x cubed, when you factor x out. Those val values will be negligible in compared to 1 when x goes to 0. Those powers will be way smaller than 1. So it's little of 1. The first one. Now the root of that for the real numbers splits into the cubic root of x cubed over 3 and the cubic root of that which is 1. So I can write it as the cubic root of x cubed, so it will just x over the cubic root of 3 factorial is just 6. 6. And uh, this will be just 1 plus little o of 1. The cubic root of that is just the same value, it's approaching to 1. Now I can bring my factor in and it's equal to x over the cubic root of 6 plus, now I bring x in here, it will be little o of x, little o of x. Very easy, very elegant form, and now the derivative of it, it's an infinitely way small sequence, higher order, small order, so that now, therefore, we can say, almost done, the derivative f prime of x from here is actually equal to the derivative of that term, is 1 over the cubic root of 6. And moreover, the derivative at x equal to 0 is exactly the same. There is no x variable, it's just a constant. Moreover, f prime at 0 is actually equal to the cubic root of 6. So what is the answer here? We need to solve the problem by answering this question. The answer Yes, function is differentiable. We can say this term, there is a derivative now. This function is differentiable. At x equal to 0. And moreover, we know the value of the derivative at 0. It is exactly x. The value of that derivative, it's given here. It's 1 over the cubic root of 6. And that's, that's actually the answer. Yeah. f prime of 0 is equal to 1 over the cubic root of 6. As you can see, it's a very short couple of steps, just a little bit of thinking outside of the box, not just looking at the derivative by involving the series solves this problem very easily in a couple of steps and that was the alternative approach. I hope that was clear, interesting, informative and useful and I also hope you enjoy that interesting alternative approach of calculating the derivatives of the rational and uh, power function. I hope to see you soon in my future clips. As you can see, I always post something new which is not discussed in many books and which was not discussed before me.
Thank you for your time. I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.